Hello. Can anyone around here speak basketball? There it is. It's the Confederacy of Dunks Basketball Podcast. Hello, bonjour. Hello. Welcome to the Confederacy of Dunks Basketball, Basketball Podcast. Podcast. Uh, I am the host, Freddie Revis. And uh, I'm the producer, Matt Duncan. How are you doing? I am doing okay. You're that, emotional. I'm emotional. That game was overwhelming. Yeah. Um, <laughs> KD's injury was extremely sad and has uh, long-term ramifications. So Horrible. Pro- processing those. Um Disappointed in any Raptor fan that would choose to uh, cheer an injury. Yeah. Also disappointed from a narrative of all kind of bloodthirsty fans being so easily accepted because that clearly wasn't true. Yeah. And uh, all the folks I know who are in the stadium yep. uh, and, and analysts and stuff like Kevin O'Connor was even saying, you know, it, it very much turned into a let's like a KD a supportive KD chant very quickly. Yes. Um, but man, the theatrics of the game, the the Kawhi Michael Jordan ten point run, the the timeout that Nurse took and maybe shouldn't have, uh, the Curry Clay uh, three threes in a row, just unreal. The, the game was insane. Yeah. Like it's like as far as like theater in sports, you know. Yes, I'm a Raptors fan, and I was I was hurt that they didn't win, and I so desperately wanted to have that crazy giant party, but also. As a as a person who loves basketball, like that was like a great game. Like oh, yes, yeah. there was lots of misses or whatever, but good defense, lots of misses. high drama. That's Steph Curry. Oof. You know him throwing those threes. Oof. Like he must have excelled in hot potato when he was a kid. Mm-hmm. Like he does, oh god, does he yeah. even get his hand on the ball when he does it? Oh my shot. god, that's all he ever talks about hot potato <laughs> and how he excelled. He in got it pulled as a kid. aside in elementary school. He like, to, like, I talk to you for a sec. Private Montessori camp. <laughs> Okay, and I mean these weren't regular potatoes. These are like hot, hot, hot oh, yeah, big spuds, <laughs> and they were burning people's like Chernobyl style, like, <laughs> like their hands right off. We had a couple um, of Chernobyl references in this one. Yeah, we did. I, I literally just watched episode one of Chernobyl. Oh, it's it was very intense, very good. Yeah. Um, okay. But yeah, we got, well, we got a call-in episode, um, so uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give you a quick rundown of who, who we talked to. Talk to uh, talk to Ned Petrie, Catherine um, Niker, Catherine Niker, Gary Rido Jr. Yeah, that's right. Talk to Thomas Revis, my bro. Uh, um, we Lisa talked to Nobrega, Lisa Nobrega, Jason DeRoss. Yeah. So we got six callers, um, and it was pretty intense. But hot take, hot take, hot takes. Yeah. Um, how are you feeling watching that game, Matt? Was that I had it. I I sat here by myself watching it. I'll tell you two things that made me sick. Before just knowing all the Durant stuff, I said to the TV before it started, "Don't play. You're going to get hurt." I just knew he was going to get hurt. I obviously didn't know it was going to be an Achilles thing. I, I thought maybe he would just you know pull yeah. his calf again. But I had a terrible feeling about that. And then the worst thing is the stream that I was watching conked out in the last minute. No. Yeah. <laughs> And like, of the game? Yeah, and like Reddit just shut down and like I could not find a thing to work. It was brutal. I so heard it was like, that that happened yeah. for a lot of people. Yeah, I, that happened to me. We had to like, my uh, fiance found a stream that was the radio. So I was listening to it. Oh, wow. Radio. Okay, you know what? <laughs> That's fine. Because that just means you're a hardcore fan. Yeah. Because it was, was it earlier? No, it was uh, it was last year. Sorry. I listened to a Raptors uh, Thunder game where the Raptors ended up losing by like, I don't know, 16 points and yeah. just fell apart in the fourth. Um, and uh, I listened to that game on the radio in South Carolina in on Sirius uh, in Caitlin's parents' car in the driveway <laughs> by myself for like two hours. Um, it, so it so you're so a hardcore exciting. fan now. Yeah, you're definitely. Hardcore I think, fan and I will just say that like, you know, when you really get a hankering for a California sandwich yes. or something, you want a veal sandwich? Sure. I don't know what it is, but maybe it's the stress of the Raptors in the playoffs, but I'm dying to get a Chuck Hayes jersey. I've been searching the internet like crazy because that's where it all started for me. I cannot find a Chuck Hayes okay. jersey anywhere. We got a lot of hardcore Raptors fans yeah. who listen to can, this pod. Can you find me one? A can 2014 you, Can you send us a Chuck link? Chuck Hayes jersey. Shoot us a link yeah. where 
Matt might be able to find a Chuck Wagon t-shirt. He doesn't even need the map of all the place that Chuck eats. He just wants a t-shirt yeah. with his jersey, maybe a Raptors yeah. one, maybe a Rockets one. <laughs> A Sacramento one would do even. I mean, perhaps. I feel like I found a Sacramento one. I would prefer the Raptors 2014-15 okay. season. Okay. Sacramento's a bit too low of a yeah, bar. I, I, don't, I don't want to just wear any Chuck Hayes jersey. It's got to be the one that he really caught my eye back yeah, then. He did. So... Um, <laughs> The uh, Chuck, man. There's, there's a, every burger is a slider for Chuck. Absolutely. God okay. Bless him. So, uh, Matt, if people want to support this pod, they want to help us, where can they find us? Where can they subscribe? Where can they click? We're on all the fancy things like Instagram and uh-huh. Twitter. Yes. We are on YouTube. Yes. We're also on your favorite podcatcher like iTunes Dig it. and uh, Spotify oh, yeah. and Stitcher. The great thing about those podcatchers is you can just subscribe to us. Woo. You give us a rating and every time a new episode is up up and running, you get it. You don't have to look for it. Hey. I just added us to Google Play. Oh. I don't know, you Android lovers out there. Yeah. But I, I can't figure it out. It says it's live on Google Play. Good luck finding it. Um, it's, and uh, yeah, just go to dunkspockets.com. We've got all our links there. And uh, don't forget to click on uh, as well the... Our, our guests' names, so they're all hyperlinked to go to their Twitter, so you can follow them Yeah, there. and they're all comedians. They're all funny. Entertainers, uh, entrepreneurs, yeah. uh, basketball analysts, hilarious, cool, incredible people uh, in their own right. So for sure, check out their stuff. Yeah, and the uh, next episode will be our season finale of season six. It'll be the conclusion of the uh, NBA season, and we are pretty excited. It's been the best season we've had yet, the most, you know... Uh, you know, we're in the Honestly, finals. It's like, the best year in every <laughs> crazy. way. Crazy, yeah. So it's if, been it's if, been crazy. If you support this podcast, yeah, uh, thank you so much. We really, really do appreciate it, and it's been an awesome and super, super fun year. So yeah, and you know, if you don't want to like subscribe and do all that kind of stuff, just tell people about the podcast because I think that's what's been working more than anything else. The word of mouth has been growing, and uh, our listenership has been growing this entire time. So yeah. thank you. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, uh, hope, Guess, you, hope uh, you enjoy the goddamn episode. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Catherine. Catherine. Niker. Okay. Hello. We are here with uh, with Catherine Niker. She is the first caller. Uh, she was on last uh, last week's episode of the pod, and. Um, I'm sure like most hardcore fans I know, she's probably going through a lot right now. A lot of emotions. Um, I think she was watching at the uh, the comedy bar, Blue and Ossington. Uh, I can't confirm that, but we were, we were texting earlier in the day. So, uh, first of all, hello, Catherine. How are you? Hello. Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, let's jump right in there. Uh, I know you're probably thinking about Nurse. So what's Nurse thinking after this in, insanely dramatic game? He's taking some heat. I'm pretty sure uh, Nick Nurse is thinking, wow, I really wish I didn't call that timeout that I gave zero thought to. Yeah, so do you, do you buy his answer for calling the timeout? Like, do you think that was good enough reasoning or do you think he just made a mistake and it was, it was a bad, bad decision? Um, I think he... Mm-hmm. called the timeout because he felt his team needed a rest. Right. And he probably wasn't wrong about that. But, yeah, it ended up killing the momentum. And I think for Nick, or for the team, it probably doesn't help to dwell on that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I feel like that's why they're not giving us a lot of that, like, oh, well, it was a mistake, or like, even hinting to the fact that it was this big mistake. Uh, I think for them, it's like, well, you, you know, gold, like, let's face it, Golden State controlled the vast majority of the game. And we were able to hang around and we made a really good run in the fourth, like a really good, like, oh my God, is this the Kawhi Leonard hero game? I know. The kind of run and then lost it at the end. But like, to me, like it was Golden State's game almost the entire game. So, do you think Nick and 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 the kind of the Raptors crew is under kind of like like underselling the the magnitude of that like ill timed timeout because they want to keep momentum, or do you think that they they genuine genuinely were just like, hey, we lost that game by one point. Kevin Durant came in. 
and it was insane and he hit three threes and yeah. we lost by one point. Like, do you, do you think they're yeah. kind of like really calm about it? And that's the angle here. Is that, is that kind of where you're coming from? Uh, the more I think about it, the more I think they realize both things are true. And, and that is like, you know, like Kawhi in the post game was like, you know, if they didn't hit those shots, like if they didn't go on that 9 0 run or if something different happened, we're not talking about the timeout. Right. You know, like what I was frustrated about just watching those last three minutes of the game, you know, in the moment, you don't think the timeout's going to have like that kind of an impact, although you are like, okay, things are slowing down. But mm-hmm. I think we're all just kind of collectively trying to catch our breath. To me, I was just like, why aren't we playing the perimeter defense of our lives right now? Like, I just felt like the Raptors didn't answer with the level of intensity that you think closing out a game winning an NBA championship would look like. Right. And and I, th- I think that's a great point because um... – during the timeout, you know, Steve Kerr was able to kind of collect his team, which was more tired than ours. And mm-hmm. and he kind of ran some, he drew up some plays for Clay and Steph. So you would hope that if you're nurse and you're calling a timeout <clears throat> while Kawhi is hot, you know, I, I wish nurse would have let Kawhi miss once before he called that timeout. But yeah, I right. think if you are doing that and the goal is to kind of like, all right, let's, let's, let's be really kind of sophisticated and intense in these last three minutes, three and a half minutes. I'm yeah, I'm totally with you. Like why, why the, per, why the perimeter defense wasn't more intense and why they weren't more intent on letting someone other than Steph uh, or clay beat them is, is a little bit baffling. And I actually think that, you know, it was a one-point game, but the Raptors also had a couple of fortunate calls. They had the, like the double boogie goaltend. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you know, they were goaltends, and then they also have the bo- the boogie offensive foul, which went our way. Oh, and there was also the over and back. Um, so uh, the, I mean, oh yeah, and the, and the goaltend, the Kyle Lowry goaltend, mm-hmm. goaltending thing. Because I was like, wow, I didn't even think that shot was going to get a goaltending call, and then it did. Yeah, so I mean, my my point is that the Raptors definitely like, had a chance and were there, and and were intense. But yeah, like I think even you know after they hit one three or two threes, like yeah, why not call another timeout? You know what I mean? But um, yeah, like like ultimately at the end of the day, I do think it was a bad timeout, but I don't think it's the only thing that cost us the game. I totally agree. So what 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 is the other? Okay, well, I'm sure it's not the timeout that that cost us a game, but what are you feeling about how that game uh, was lost for the Raptors? Like, what kind of what jumps out to you as like, oh, that's the thing, or is it kind of like many things? Well, there was a few key moments. Um, one uh, is the moment we just talked about. Two, um, you know, Nick Nurse chose not to call a timeout at the very end, right, uh, for that last play, and I guess that was so they wouldn't have a chance to set their defense, but boy, did they set that defense quickly. It was one of the better defensive plays. I feel like I've ever seen. Yeah, they definitely, I mean, they doubled Kawhi, uh, forced him to pass and then they recovered pretty damn good. I mean, Draymond's fantastic. And he, he, he got a finger on the ball as, as Kyle has let everyone know. Yeah, and while they're doubling Kawhi, somehow uh, Draymond, Green, Draymond Green has got Marcus Saul locked up enough so he can't run out and set a pick. Like, nobody tried to set a pick or clear space for Kawhi somehow. So, you know what I mean? Like, I, yeah. don't, I don't know. It was just, I really think it would have been worthwhile calling a timeout and setting up a final shot. Okay. Um, sorry, first of all, totally agree. Uh, we should set something up for Kawhi going to the rim, right? Um, and then Absolutely. have, yeah, I mean, get, a, get an O read with Surge. Or, <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but because we're, uh, pressed for time and, and, and I want to get some, I want to get some kind of like future feelings from, from you. Let's stick with yeah. nurse and let's stick with kind of the Raptors. Cause I'm sure we'll talk about KD and, and a bunch of other stuff yeah. uh, later on in the pod. But, um, what what should the Raptors be thinking going in? Should they be focusing on the on the surge 
Kyle pick and roll working? Should they be focusing on uh, the fact that KD won't be there and and Golden State can't pull that card again, obviously? Um, mm. Or should they be like, hey, we're the better team. We shouldn't be afraid of Oracle. Let's just go in and kind of close this out. Like, Or, or is there something tactical maybe that jumps out to you? Um, there isn't one particular tactical thing that is jumping out at me at this moment. I just think like they got to go back to what was working for them in game three and four. I'm really hoping that on the road, they'll play a bit looser. Like I wonder if just the pressure of being at home and the pressure of all these fans in Toronto and across Canada, like, I don't know if that's like seeping into their minds at all. Like I know they don't say it is, but, I wonder if there's something about being at home right now where they just feel this like desperate energy and maybe they're going to play a bit more relaxed on the road. I don't know. I mean, there's something to that. And I think both those wins in Oracle uh, would suggest that the Raptors are pretty comfortable playing in Oracle. Um, Especially that game four was a pretty like sound win with clay. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like whenever they've beaten us, it's been really close. And when we've beaten them, it's like we've really beaten them. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure what the exact number is, but I think we've outscored them by like 40-some-odd points in the series. Right, and I just feel like in all the games that we've won, we have controlled most of the game. And I just honestly, like with Game 5, I've never felt worse watching a game and worse after a game ended. Okay. Like, the, the, just, the, this is perfect. So the whole just, vibe of the game, I was just so down. Like, like people were borderline making fun of me with how depressed I looked in the third quarter of this game. <laughs> oh, sorry. I, I just immediately laughed. Uh, but no, that may be fine. that may be a serious. <laughs> Sorry, Catherine. My instinct was to laugh at people making fun of you, and and that's on yeah, me. Please, please. Sorry. Oh, that's what I'm here for. It. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, look, like we've watched a lot of basketball. We know how these games go. Yes. You know. Anyway. Well, okay. There's there's a lot of reason to be kind of like shaken up, and uh, I think we, I think Toronto was fairly devastated in general. But um, can you leave everyone with with uh, something positive to think about uh, as this podcast comes out on the day of uh, Finals Game Six? Uh, yeah, uh, I read today that uh, some Toronto fans started donating to Kevin Durant's charity. I heard that too. Uh, shout out to them. Shout out to trying to uh, reverse this bad karma. I feel like that's a very good karma thing for us to do after everything that has uh, unfolded in the last uh, day or so. And uh, wrap the set. Okay. You, oh, is that it? Is that is that? <laughs> okay. This is going on in both my headphones. <laughs> Sounds like a Chernobyl warning. <laughs> it does sound like um, that. Uh, I can't even believe we didn't talk about the injury. That that's just I know. how much. That's how much it, is going on. It's an NBA classic. It's an NBA Classics game. It's an NBA Classic, and I think, yeah, I think we're going to have to leave it there, Catherine. But, you know, you heard it from Catherine, everyone. She's saying that uh, we're going to win in six. And, um, yeah, there's, lo- there's lots of reason to be positive, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can go right to the beach with the trophy. It's going to be so much fun. That's right. And, you know, we're, you know, balancing karma yeah. is important. And we're doing <laughs> yes. it. So We're doing we're doing it. Yeah. Um, okay, buddy. Well, uh, yeah, thanks for hopping on. And uh, let's, uh, let's, let's get this thing done, right? Yes. All right, here we go. Kyle Lowry's journey through the all-time playoff assists leaderboard. You ready, Matt? Mm-hmm. Okay. So Kyle started the playoffs with 335 assists at 110th all time. And he now has 484 assists. Since our last podcast, Kyle has passed James Worthy, Norm Nixon, Richard Hamilton, Gus Williams, Kevin Garnett, Doc Rivers and Charles Barkley. Kyle now sits 56th all time and he's coming for Nate McMillan. (laughs) 
Gary Right Out Junior. All right, uh, I'm here with my buddy uh, and and super fan. Uh, he's he's there with his dog in the dog park. Uh, how's it going, Gary? <laughs> Gary Right Out Junior, baby. How you doing? <laughs> uh, good, man. I'm I'm feeling pretty optimistic, even though that uh, that loss was like really dramatic and kind of like sad in a bunch of ways. But oh, I, yeah. yeah, well, you well, well, it's funny. Yeah, like so. Watching the game, I was like, I wasn't that nervous. Like, we weren't hitting shots in the first half, but I was like, that was the same as game four. We were, we were, we yes. weren't hitting shots in the first half, but we were keeping it close. And I was like, I just felt like at halftime, I was like, you know what? We're just going to start hitting these shots in the second half. We're going to pull away and take care of it. And and it felt like, it felt like if we could get ahead and and get over that hump that that it would just break them and then they wouldn't come back and we got to you know the 107 90 or the 103 97 mark yeah and i was like i it was one more bucket you know if that gap went to eight points instead of six i think it was over Oh, totally. And I think like G-State, G-State also recognized that because they treated those last three minutes with like such a desperation. I think, I think yeah. there's a reason that only really Clay and, like Clay and Seth were the only ones to shoot in that time. Yeah, well, and, and those next two trips down the floor that we took, we wasted, you know? Like totally. if one of those two we hit on, we were fine. But, but they, were, they were both like awkward possessions, you know? So... um we ha- we haven't talked uh, yet about the Kevin Durant injury, and I want to get your perspective because I'm sure you at I'm sure you were at the bar at, at comedy bar uh, last yeah, night, yeah. getting ready for the party. So, yeah. how did the cheering work in com- in comedy bar? Like, and 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 I don't th- I don't think the majority of fans ever are going to like have like nasty intentions, but I do think there are bad fans in every fan base and like, obviously you don't single anybody out, but like, was there any rejoicing of Kevin Durant, like being seriously injured or was it kind of like confusion? Like it felt like it wasn't a stadium. Well, you know, like, okay. So yeah, for sure. Everybody initially cheered at the turnover and yeah. subsequently scoring. Right. And then it was, and then it was like, there was a first wave of people recognizing that he was hurt. And there genuinely was an odd amount of uh, like of excitement in that mm-hmm. when people were like, yo, K- K- Katie's down or whatever. Like it was like, it wasn't even that, you know, even that sounds like kind of like opportunistic, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Totally. In like in, in, in just an excited tone about it. And it was, that was weird. Um, but I could see, you know, like, I mean, there had been that like, incredible exchange between Fred and Kevin Durant earlier when like, Oh man, totally. You know. And, and even there was some animosity between him and Pascal. Like it was clear. The game plan was to go at him, which you should yeah. in that situation. And yeah, Fred jawing with him. Like I, I even liked the whole play with Fred there where he realized that KD was like, they're trying to hide KD on him. And he's like, I'm five eleven. I'm gonna like shake you out of your shoes, and yeah, uh, and, and I know you're coming and back then, from an yeah, injury. And then he went for it. He and did. Then, like you know that that sequence was awesome. Like it was awesome that you know KD was trying to read the cover, and then you know uh, Fred's moves were sick. And then <laughs> can you imagine you know, if KD got hurt in that sequence? Oh, like Fred <laughs> yeah, rocked him. Well, like that yeah, so exactly. easily could have happened. Oh right? yeah. You know it's funny, right? Like everyone's talking about the injury and stuff, and it's like we play in a softball league where every year I tell everybody, Hey, really stretch out your legs before that first game of the year. And it's like, you can do all the jogging up and down the grass and all this other stuff you want. Uh, Matt's laughing because he got hurt. When when they showed Kevin Durant, like warming up and doing his, his spinning three shot and all this stuff. It's like, he's actively like doing those with attention on his calf or whatever, you know, or on his Achilles. So, he's conscious of how far he's pushing himself when he's doing it. But when you get into play, like at softball, when you hit that first hit of the year and you start running down the line Mm -hmm. to beat out a throw to first, that's not the same energy as when you were like, you, you know, when you were consciously aware of it, you're just going beyond what your body's capable of because you're pushing yourself as hard as you can. And once you get into that intrinsic uh, you, you know, mind space of just playing and not worrying about it. That's where you, that's where you can get hurt. And I you think know, it's just, there, 
there's no way to measure practice versus the real thing. Yeah, I think like adrenaline also kicks in. And if you if you went in, if KD went into the game being like, oh, I'm just going to shoot threes and space the court out and make it easier for everyone else. Very quickly, he's like, I'm going to take Pascal. Like he's that type of guy where I mean, most NBA players are. But I think like like you said, like the sport and the excitement kind of takes over and you, pu- happened. you that's, push that's, your body. The, so think about this. Like everyone plays sports to be a professional athlete. You have to be one of the best in the world. That means you have to play with that edge. My, my favorite hockey player growing up was Wendell Clark. He had a lot of injuries and you know, they wanted, you, you know, Cam Neely, same thing, great, hard player. And it's like, they wanted to try and get those guys, you know, Wendell too. They were like, maybe try to play without all that edge so you can extend your career. And he's like, if I'm not playing the way I play, then I can't play. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess just, just kind of like going, going into the, the KD like decision, do you think this is a scenario where, you know, this needs to like not happen again, or the NBA needs to do a bunch of stuff, or is this kind of KD being like, I want to be a hero. And then it just was a really, really ugly consequence. Like, is there, is there fingers, like, is there people to blame? Like uh, whether it's G state or public pressure or whatever. I, yeah, I mean, those, they're, everyone's to blame. It is yeah. it's the nature of it, you know, like, especially the NBA more than anything else. Look at the scrutiny after every game. Look at, you know, they were just talking on the radio about how, like, is there any other sport where you actually want to watch the post game conferences? Like, the drama of the league and of the individual players is, is so tantamount to, mm-hmm. to the sport. You know? Yeah, it's, so it's, one, it's like, one of the biggest selling we points. Wanna, we we want to know what everyone's take on the game was after the game, and we don't care about that in other sports because they just give you a bunch of, like, you know, boilerplate answers. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's like I'm sure he wanted to play and he said he was fine, and that's in, that happens in every sport. Yeah. And you can, you can have the best athletic trainer in the world dude, look at you and go, yeah, it's not great, but I don't know. I guess he's fine. If he says he's fine, he's fine. You know? Yeah, that's kind of my my thing with like like I, I've read a lot about like you know the trainers shouldn't have allowed him like was he medically cleared all this kind of stuff, and you know at the end of the day they're doing like X rays they're doing ultrasounds I'm sure they're using better Murder technology eyes. than than I can Look, understand it's, but it's but poss- yeah it's yeah. possible that the organization was like we don't think you should play, and even when they say that and walk away Katie's like yeah but they want me to play. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like, He's like, we don't think no, you should play, but like, I'm going to play and it's going to be the coolest story. But not even that. Even That's his own narrative in his own head. What I'm saying is that even when someone is like, uh, hey, we don't want you to play, in your head you're like, they're just saying that because they have to say that. They want me to play. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, like it's, like, it's implicit it, that he's expecting. You can't think anything else. So uh, how do you how do you think like uh, d- just just kind of like going back to your point about you know the players and and the press conferences and like f- and who they are as celebrities and people kind of being tantamount to the sport itself I feel like that's hope- that's taken on a new life and like wh- wh- where do you think that's all like how how's that going to change with this guy who everyone's supposed to pair up with in the summer going down yeah. for I think what twelve months at least Yeah, I mean I I hope. The problem is these things don't stay in people's minds. Right. So, you know, we've seen it happen before with other players. I, I, you know, I hope now when a player says, uh, you know, I'm not ready that everyone just lets get, you know, gives them that break. But I mean, you know, the media needs to, you know, they need clicks. They need to sell papers. They, they will, they make everything bigger than it is, you know? Yeah, I mean, are are the KD are are the Warriors better without KD? Started and did not stop until he came back and got injured. Basically, exactly. even though the Raptors yeah, were beating like, them, fan, yeah. fans in Golden State were wearing cupcake costumes or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, and it's funny too how everyone wants to be like it's this one person, but it's it's like anyone who kind of is like slamming KD for not coming back or not being tough or whatever. That's part of the ethos of like this kind of like 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 just step up and play through pain type of thing. Like I mean, there's been all these heroic stories too, right? Of of players who've played through serious injuries. Yeah, well, like yeah, or like. Kirk Gibson being injured and just coming in for a pinch hit home run and being like the sickest thing in the world. Totally. You know? like, and it is cool. Like, I mean, yeah. I, 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 I obviously want to beat the Warriors and I'll take it any way that we can have it. And I don't think that 
even if this is if this is remembered as the KD got injured finals, I think that that doesn't take away from how good the Raptors are right now. Um, yeah. But well, we're hearing yeah. you know we're hearing that like you know that this isn't going to make any team shy away from giving him a supermax still or whatever or a max contract, right? Yeah, that's 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 like, pretty encouraging. That's that's crazy. Like hearing that teams are just like yeah, whatever. Like imagine just eating a whole year at the maximum salary because he's gone for a whole year. Did you hear what? Like, did you hear what Golden State was offering them? Apparently, Even, yeah, like a, a, con- a contract is an opt out whenever you want. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, opt out whenever. Wow, that yeah. would be kind of. I like mean, a I feel like that. I feel like that's the deal he should take. I yeah. feel like Golden State should at least pay his rehab. What would be very cool is like, you know, he spends the next eleven months recovering, and then, you know, we play them in the finals next year when they're healthy. That would be amazing. Yeah. Okay, uh, you know what I mean, like that's that's the real narrative is we win this year, and all these fans talk about how it has an asterisk or whatever, and then we get another shot at them next year, and he's back. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I guess that that was the ending sound effect, but it kind of fit well with like then he's back, and then matches. Okay, I guess that's a rocket firing off. It's a synth zap impact. Okay. Thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, Gary, I uh, appreciate you doing the pod. And I, I, couldn't, um, I, I just want to say, I couldn't tell at all what that sound effect was. And I thought it was just someone going. <laughs> like, good idea. I think, it, know, like, I think it basically was like, I, I, I my firm belief is that Matt records all of these cues with his mouth before I come over. <laughs> yeah, literally. I just thought it was someone going. That's how you like keep it royalty long. free. <laughs> That's how you keep it royalty free. Yeah, we're uh, we're saving a lot of money here on the Fantasy of Dunks podcast. Oh yeah. Wow. Just Michael Wind. You just Michael Wind blowing it over there. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Um, well, Gary, enjoy this uh, beautiful day uh, in the dog park, and um, yeah, Raptors and Six. Uh, it's gonna Raptors be. And six. Uh, I hope so. Uh, all the shows uh, canceled again for uh, uh, at Comedy Bar so that we can screen in all the rooms again tomorrow. So awesome. Huge. It was, a zoo th- it was a zoo there on Monday, so it'll be a good time again. Cool. Well, yeah. if, you, if you hear this pod, go go celebrate yeah. at the Comedy Bar. Uh, I, I watched it at Miguel's house, but we were headed to the Comedy Bar. To celebrate. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's that, that's, bought, that's listen, the plan. Guys, we, Mark and Jada and I bought a lot of fireworks. Oh, oh, oh baby. Um, okay. Well, uh, let's all just dream about the, the Raptors winning and, and those fireworks at Comedy Bar. And uh, yeah, thanks, Gary. Yeah, I think we're going to get to sing uh, and enjoy uh, very calmly about the last seven minutes of the game tomorrow. Oh, Me too. Me too. Fun. It's going to be a comfortable blowout. I'm into it. <laughs> yep. Yep. All right. I'll cool, talk dude. to you guys. All right. See you, man. See ya. Marcus Soul's free ones. This is... Uh, this is the this is us following Marcus Gasol's all-time free throws made lists in the playoffs. So, Mark started the playoffs with 290 playoff free throws made at 144th all-time. He now has 327 free throws made. Mark has been active since the last pod. <laughs> since last pod, he has passed Slater Martin, George Hill. Bailey Howell Paul Millsap Bob McAdoo Bob Dandridge and Alex English He now sits at 118th in all-time playoff free throws made tied with Deron Williams and coming for Paul Silas Petrie. Okay, I'm here with my boy, Cleveland yeah. Cavaliers fan, oh. Ned Petrie. Uh-huh. What's up, buddy? Oh, hey, hey, hey. How's it going, gang? Have you got the basketball fever? Oh, let's just say <laughs> I'm very, very sick to my stomach. <laughs> oh, my God. This, I, In a way... Uh, as you mentioned, I'm a Cavs fan. That's by virtue of having grown up in Cleveland. But I am I am all in on these on these Raptors, and in a way, I am even more tense than I was with the Cavs a few years ago, because the Cavs were behind three one, right? So right. like 
they were scraping and fighting, but the 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 uh, the Raptors being up the other way, I'm just more. It's my nature to to worry about the worst case scenario, and ah, I just need the series to wrap up because it's yeah. getting too tense. Too so, tense, gang. So, uh, how does the worst case scenario play out? Like, so we've already had game one. KD shows mm-hmm. up. It's a curveball. Throws the Raptors. You know, it's enough to it's enough to kind of like throw them off for that one game. They lose at mm-hmm. home. Then they're going back to. G state to Oracle, the last game there ever. But yeah. Mm-hmm. So once they get there, how does this, how does the story of the Raptors losing, um, how does it go? How, like if, if it doesn't work out. For yeah. Them like, like, in this like, like, like tell me your deepest, most intricate, like basketball. Oh, fears. God. Well, the worst case scenario, you know, is that somehow, uh, Katie coming back, they, they're able to sell it to the players as you got to win this for him. Yeah. You know, cause he stepped up like a, you know, like a true warrior, you yeah. know, and win it for, is it, it the, is it the Gipper or the Skipper? <laughs> what, what's that saying? Win it for the Gipper. The Gipper. I mean, yeah. Gipper. Yeah. What's a Gipper? Well, I think the Sorry. Gipper's different. The Gipper, I think, uh, like died of tuberculosis or something. <laughs> oh, so fair enough. Not so that grim. Okay. But uh, cheers. <laughs> but yeah, win win one for him. Now, uh, of course, you know, my preference would be that the players start whispering to one another and going, "Hey, did are they exploiting us?" You know, because I just think this KD thing is uh, is such such uh, they they've done him such a disservice by having him play. But if I'm the coaching staff, I might of the Warriors, I might try to spin this as, as uh, you know, you guys got to step up like he did. So wait, let's um, let's go into kind of like the players' rights aspect of this. Because so I was just talking with Gary, you know, mm-hmm. kind of about how. There's like sometimes this implicit agreement, right? So you might have like Warriors staff being like, KD, you're not able to play. And then Mm -hmm. KD kind of knows that they're doing what they have to do. But what he has to do is kind of like step in, step up in this like amazing, you know, moment and become a hero. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. you know, just like so many, like like Willis Reed and all these like like amazing NBA legends before him, you know, coming out mm-hmm. of the tunnel to inspire your team is like a, a very storied thing in sports. Like, mm-hmm. but yeah, as far as like where the kind of like where the gavel comes down, when you say that he's exploited, like first of all, I agree with you, but I kind of just want to see where your head's at. Well, I, I just think uh, they knew he had a tear in his Achilles. Like, I, I don't see them. There's a reason he didn't play for six weeks, you know, like it's because they knew this was the risk. So you think um, like from the very beginning, the whole calf injury thing was a bit shaky. Yeah, I, I think from the well, I mean, the uh, from the day he was injured in the youth series, a lot of the commentators, particularly the ones that played identified it then as an Achilles issue. Right. And it's now been confirmed today. He's had surgery. Yeah. Yeah. So so he's already uh, had surgery. He's had surgery and he's already, he's already posted on Instagram, a thing to the fans. Right. So So, he he doesn't seem very frustrated with G state though. No. And you know, that could be, that could be a scenario where, it will that that will look very different in a couple months, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and we'll learn more for sure. But um, yeah, as far as like you know, G State being kind of negligent, I, w- I want you to just kind of go on, Ned. Sure. Well, I, I I think they knew from the get go that that was a risk. You know that whatever the nature of his injury was, that his Achilles looked shaky, and that's why he didn't play for a month. And it's only when they're down, you know, like if they were up three one, they probably right. wouldn't make him play. And if, if he was, you know, signed for the next three years or something, they wouldn't have him play. It's only because um, they know they only have a, a few games left with a max and they probably spun it to him. Like, you know, uh, so, I, I, I don't know if they underplayed to him the risk. Like, I don't see him going all out if he knew that his Achilles could rupture that easily, but somebody must have known. And it did um, seem to rupture rather easily. I mean, yes. I, I, I was playing not basketball. On a, not on any. He wasn't doing anything more strenuous. He was just turning around, just running around a guy. Yeah. I mean, that's a basic, fundamental motion. 
I, I was um, playing uh, basketball with my brother Miguel, uh, mm-hmm. who's on the pod on a regular basis, um, and he tore his Achilles. And it was very mm-hmm. weird. You know, it wasn't a collision. It was kind of him stepping back. Um, and he had like rolled his foot a little bit earlier. But, you know, he didn't feel a lot of tension. He didn't really feel a, like a lot of lead up. Is there mm-hmm. and I, I'm, I'm just like I'm not like legitimately trying to devil's advocate you. I'm just kind of agreeing mm-hmm. with you. So I'm trying to push you further in in your in your very very lovely explanation of of <laughs> guilt here no but so is is there any kind of i don't know credence to the idea that to everyone's best knowledge they thought that the risk wasn't this great or do you think that based on like how gingerly he was playing that, that people were keenly aware that the risk was this intense like a career ending if, injury. If the basically. risk uh, wasn't this intense, he would have played before, uh, before game five, you know, like I, I think that, that they put him on the shelf was because something was wrong and they, they wanted to sort of wait it out. They, I, they may have worked themselves into it. They may have, when they were down this much, uh, calling to him or him say, and it's, it's possible he was eager to get back in and they decided to sort of turn a blind eye to what they knew. I'm just unconvinced that the entire medical staff of the Warriors uh, wasn't aware that this was a possibility. Um, and they, they seem to be, you know, going way out of their way to try to imply that, oh, there's no way. We, we I know. No. Um, there's definitely some of, like guilt in the cover up Donald Trump stuff going down right yeah. now. Where it's like, now, okay, one, stop screaming one, about one, your innocence for a oh, sec, G State. Sorry, go ahead. Well, the, the one one wrinkle here is is whether he was in on it too. Now, one thing I do know, I, I do have a family member too that had uh, Achilles surgery from a, a rupture, and their uh, the way their doctor described it to them when it was just an Achilles tear was, you know, you're better off rupturing it. You know that if it's just a tear, there's really not much you can do except for to delay the inevitable. But it's once it's ruptured that you can actually, you know, hmm. fix it, like where where you can actually eliminate the pain and things like that. So who knows? Maybe they pulled him aside and said, you know, you if you can play until it ruptures, you know, we'll take care of you or something. But then again, I don't know. Like, Harry, you're hurt, but go get the Quidditch type thing, right? right? No, way, sir. Well, well, what's the little Maybe. gold? What's the little but, gold but Kevin, thing? Kevin Durant is one of the few players that I think you could convince to do something like that because he is so, you know, he's he's sort of a fragile personality. He and needs... I, I actually, you know, I want to touch on that for a second because I think it's like sad. Um, and then, then I'm going to ask you a question and just go further down this dark path here. But I feel like, <laughs> the, you know, it's been such a reductive conversation for a long time about people not you know, their career is not meaning anything if they don't have a, a championship. You have a, you know, a guy like Shaq being like, you have no rings to Barkley. You know, Barkley mm-hmm. had a ridiculously good career. Uh, a guy yeah. like Steve Nash had a ridiculously good career. And it's just such a reductive conversation to kind of like throw these like, oh, but how many rings do you got? And I feel mm-hmm. like that was a part of obviously LeBron go, like joining up in Miami. But, mm-hmm. you know, further down the line. Durant, you know, probably calculated he's never going to be able to beat LeBron. So he joined G state and, you know, people didn't like that. And, you know, he, his narrative kind of like, he turned into like the bad guy. Um, and now it seems like he's been pressured into, you know, trying to be a hero. Uh, and it's like totally backfired. Like, I feel like he might be this like harsh, harsh lesson of like, trust yourself and don't trust like, outsiders kind of but well yeah he he does seem to be yeah susceptible to those kinds of takes and opinions and things like i mean you know this is the guy that uh, i'm gonna dog him on this forever that uh, being caught with the the burner account where he oh my god yeah yeah random people on twitter it's like this is a guy that really takes to heart what's being said about him yeah the burner account even though he's an MVP and a five-time scoring champion and a two-time champ and a two-time finals MVP, I think he came back in part because he is still susceptible to people saying that, you know, he isn't uh, as great. Okay, Ned, we're going to, we're going to end on this really, really grim question. Um, Does KD ever make an all NBA team again? Ooh, 
That's a good question. So, so he's he's a, he's two months away from being thirty one. By the way, so he he's he's out for a whole year. Like he's, he's, he's probably not going to play at all next. He'll year. he'll touch the court. Hopefully, hopefully before his thirty second birthday. <laughs> but but likely um, not. But uh, so he's he's lost a year. Um, he'd be thirty two. He's just had this surgery. He's a big guy, like taller. Mm-hmm. Um, carries more, you know, with him. I mean, yeah, he can still play. I, I see him making, um, you know, more All NBA teams. Uh, but is he going to be one hundred percent of what he's been the last? Hey, man, if he makes another All NBA team after an Achilles tear at thirty one, mm-hmm. then. Uh, then cheers to KD. You know what I mean? <laughs> that would be incredible. Well, that oh. would be. I mean, <laughs> Ned, I one of those. I, I think Bernard King and uh, Dominique Wilkins. A few of the. A few, there are a few people that have had Achilles surgery and then came back to All NBA level, but they were never quite what they were at their peak. Yeah, Dominique Wilkins uh, seems to be the one, the reference point of like a guy that came back and was still dunking. But, uh, right. Ned, I don't know if you heard it. Matt's playing it. It's a, I think it's a rubber ducky. Um, and that's... <laughs> that's yeah. what that was. Yeah, that's, a, yeah, that's not just like a, a sound that's about. That's Matt on a laptop staring at me, pressing it. So, um, yeah, thanks uh, thanks so much for uh, for jumping on the pod and uh, of course. going deep into this KD stuff. and. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. Let's enjoy the game, rest, man. Let's, yeah. let's, uh, let's close this out. Let's close it out, baby. Um, close it out. Sweet. Thanks, Ned. Kawhi, the god in all-time points. <laughs> We're following him in playoff points here. So Kawhi started the playoffs with 1,432 points, sitting at 137th all-time. And he now has... 2,142 playoff points. So, since last pod, Kawhi has passed Tommy Heinsohn, Roger Brown, Zelmo Beattie, Steve Nash, Jeff Hornacek, Pau Gasol, Allen Iverson, and Chris Paul. Kawhi now sits at 55th all-time in playoff points, and he's coming for Derek Fisher. Thomas Revis. I needed a family touch, obviously, for this uh, for this game and heading into game six. Family touch. Woo. Family touch, it's baby. Family hug. Woo! You got a, um, you got a so I'm here with my little bro, Thomas Revis. Tom, I know you have a million thoughts about the game. Just go. And I'll, oh jump, I'll jump in. Uh, I don't know where to start. You're not even prompting me with anything. Yeah, you want to prompt? Yeah, at, you want to prompt? Yeah, no, no, it's fine. Here's my thoughts. We're 3 2 against uh, the champs trying to win it. Let's go take another one in Oakland. Let's go from there. Woo! But uh, we, we were talking earlier in the day, though, about um, you were kind of frustrated everything. with uh, we were talking about everything. Yeah. But you were frustrated with the with the first half by the by the Raptors. Yeah. You know, and you broke me down a little bit, too. But yeah, I just, you know, like everyone that was watching the game, I, I wanted to see our, our best foot coming forward. And uh, it, it did in a lot of different ways with how we were staying close with KD in the game, but I, in my dream of dreams, it was KD was in and we were also showing him what's up. Oh, me too. Me too, dude. But that wasn't the case. And I thought we were still hanging in there just fine with them. And once it could have got smoothed out, obviously watching KD go down was just like my NBA heart sank. Uh, because you know, did you, 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 I don't want any asterisks around this when we win this ship. I wanted to beat yeah. KD. I wanted to beat the whole lot. Well, I think unfortunately it's going to be remembered as the KD Finals. But at the same time, and we've talked about this before, I don't think there is an asterisk to winning the championship in any no. sport, in any sport because it's the championship. It's too final. And they always talk about whatever you know. There's always some narrative. But yeah, there's exactly team there's win. totally but there's narrative. But I think when you go all the way and win, yeah, whatever asterisk is is done. Yeah, like uh, is that fair, Tom? I would say that's pretty fair. What do you think about the seventy three and nine season? Does that have an asterisk beside it for uh, not winning a championship? Uh, that's interesting. Um, I don't, I mean, yeah, as far as the sports fan, I am no, 
because I think that you can separate the, you can separate those, and exactly, yeah. I think you can separate those accomplishments, but I totally see the point and and how the season and the playoffs kind of work together. Like yeah, KD came back in game five and got injured, but he also played 43 minutes a game against the Clippers. And G State exactly, also had exactly. less depth all year. So, yeah, there is, it does all work together. But, I, it, but, but it all plays in. It's all like people are acting like this is this was KD's first, like it was obviously his first game in the finals, but it wasn't his first game in the playoffs and, and the work that he had already put in mm-hmm. to get G State to this point. You know, was it looking like, oh my gosh, that was gonna that could tip the scale? Well, I was a little scared when he was going three for four. Oh yeah, three points. But but no, uh, I but still hung 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 with you know. But back to your uh, just kind of talking about like wanting to beat the best team at their best. Um, I think that the Raptors like there's nothing they could do to ensure that KD was healthy to beat them. And I think that if people are really kind of like wanting to nitpick, you know, Lowry's had a broken whatever thumb for like two rounds. Pascal's hurt. Kawhi came back from an injured season and is still clearly hurt. And OG got an appendicitis before the playoffs started. So I think that, I I think, I think I just got greedy like every other Torontonian. I wanted it at home. I wanted it to be perfect. And it's just like championships aren't perfect. And they come in a a multitude of different ways. And, you know, I was a bit gutted to see that we couldn't do the, the, the poetic shot by Lowry wasn't hit. Right. But it's still like, I'm still so happy with what we were talking about earlier. Freddie is like the three quarters and the response and like, for sure. We were, there was, we were getting tons of gutsy plays up and down the court. So and it's like, yeah, I'm excited. Let's run it back. Let's run it back in Oakland. So I talked to Gary uh, right out earlier in the episode, and he was saying that seven minutes to go, game six, and uh, people are going to be celebrating. What do you think about that? Is that, is that? is that too much? Or do you feel I, very confident about well, this game? I just want to say he owns a bar. Yeah. So yeah. But he, but, sure, I, I hope for him. It's it's like that. So drinks are flowing. Oh, they'll be flying. It'll be a madhouse. He let us know there's many, many, many fireworks. <laughs> like just <laughs> at, just ready. Okay. Don't worry about Gary. Um. But no. But like I, just, I, just just point being like, do you think that that the that the kind of like the overwhelming you know Raptors have won the most quarters were the better team like, I, is that going to win out to the point I totally get sorry. where Gary's coming from I still just I think you got to give credit where credit's due to this team and what the firepower that obviously we saw in that one minute splash from when we really felt it at the end G State's G State and I'm not celebrating until the clock hits and when I do celebrate, it'll be large and I'll probably be at the comedy bar, but yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm not cracking my eggs before they hatch. Okay. Good game to seven. No problem. You're not going to celebrate for the buzzers there. You're not going to crack your eggs before the, uh, chickens come to roost, <laughs> but, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> but let me ask you this honestly and just be 100% honest. What was your excitement meter in terms of, what like the like thinking about the euphoria of winning it all? Where was that at uh, on Kawhi's tenth point of his ten point run? Uh, it was high. It was definitely like we were starting to smell it. Because for uh, me, I, time. that's the only time I can ever like I can ever remember. And like part of me is a bit embarrassed because you know you want to save that celebration, but I know how basketball works, <laughs> and I know that was six points. You know, wasn't like obviously against G State. Obviously, uh, uh, Nick Nurse made the good point of like today's NBA six points is like truly not that much uh, with three minutes to go. But it was the momentum I felt myself getting carried away from a place of like beyond excitement to euphoria and i mean i feel like i was like 80 to 90 percent excitement 10 percent euphoria but i felt it creeping in and that's a that's feeling we, i want that's why we call i want that feeling on the court freddie what's that 
That's why we call you Swaggy P on the court. You know, you're putting your hands up before the, the ball drops. Listen, Don't do that yet. Anyone who's ever played basketball with me knows that I'm Lance Stevenson, okay? <laughs> I celebrate, I taunt, I don't hit any shots, but if I do, it's a wild one. You know what I mean? A wild one. And the antics are like on par with, oh, yeah. with anybody. It's Rodrigo and, and uh, Make a Swish Foundation. Listen, I'll Mr. Rodriguez, if you're listening. Basketball joke type stuff. Mr. You know? Rodriguez, high school basketball. Well, Coach, if you're listening, you took me out of a game um, because I hit a free throw while looking at the stands and not looking at the rim. <laughs> um, I never learned my lesson. But at the same time, and you honestly, did what you were your, supposed from to From your brother, Freddie, I never saw you more in the moment, you know? That was truly you. Right? You can hit 100 free throws in a row if you got to do a lot of antics before you shot each one. There you go. Give me my antics. Give me my antics. Um, oh, but I was, I, was, I was right there, you know? But I don't know, man. I'm still like, I guess that's the, I don't feel like I'm that superstitious, but I'm like, you know, I just want the game to end with us with a win. Then I'm going to go buck wild. So what's the, what's the, until we beat the champs till the end, it's it is what it is. Okay. There's been a lot of talk about how we're the better team and they're the champs and they can, you know, da da da. da. But what's the, what does a win look like for us in, in Oakland? Like how, like, how are we going to beat them? You know, I think uh, a lot of the what we were able to do in the last three quarters and for many of the quarters during the series is just forcing these incredibly tough looks for Clay and Steph and forcing everyone else to really be a role. I think uh, Gasol and Babaka played super well, but we can't let Cousins do really much or anything. I just totally agree. Up just a, li- a little bit of space for, for those two guys to operate. Cousins a is a no go. They're coming out gunslinging last game, and the, nothing's changed for their game. They're, they're going to obviously tweak things, but in terms of shooting, they're living by the sword, dying by the sword. Those two guys are going to come out gunslinging, and we have to make those shots hard, and we can't give away two four-point plays or, you know, I don't know, yeah, Curry hit one of those, or did he hit it? I don't know. Fouling him on the three, rushing him out on the three like that, like I'm happy he physically, I guess, made one count, but none of those fouls on the three-point line. You can't be fouling on the three-point line on Curry, of all people. Yeah, we just got to make it uh, a, a win for us is, is the ball hopping and those two guys, you know, hitting obviously some of those shots that are going to break our heart. Right. Because they, they hit those big shots, but we got to make right. all of those shots look as hard as they've ever looked. And I think, you know, with, without KD there, even though he's only there for, for one quarter, you know, I think they hit like something like seven or eight of their 23s in the first quarter. Um, KD hits was, three, Draymond yeah. hits two, Boogie hits one. You know, those are, those are seven threes or six threes that might just be potentially gone for them next game. Totally. Um, and that doesn't even count about him being, having the ball out there and then just dragging his guy out. And then all of these cuts, whether they're close or backdoor or whatever, like the, the lanes opened up with KD just incredibly with him being able to hold that over on the corner and you can just pass over everyone. Like he obviously yeah. hitting those daggers, but it's just like watching the, the amount of space that Curry was running with when KD had the ball was terrifying. Tom, I don't know if you just powered through that <laughs> or if you couldn't hear it or did, did you hear any weird noises while you were just talking? I heard one. Oh, there we go. Oh yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, that means uh, our conversation is coming to a close. Um, Yeah, Uh, you know, just a standard noise when a conversation is coming to a close, Uh, whatever the the hell Matt just played. But uh, yeah, I got to get to some more calls and um, we'll be watching the game together. Um, And for whoever's listening to this pod, we'll be watching the game uh, together on the, is it 14th? No, 13th. I, I said that I said that in a weird way. We're we're recording on the twelfth, and this is coming out on the thirteenth. Yeah. Game day. Okay. Wow. It is game day. Yeah, sure. Yes. We it, will is, be. it is game day when you're listening to this pod. Uh, <laughs> Thomas, you're amazing. And uh, you're yeah, amazing. Go Raps. Uh, you know we got this. Let's freaking roll into Oakland. Let's do it. Let's do this. Let's go. Let's go. 
Elisa Nobrega. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, I'm here with my sister-in-law, um, Elisa Nobrega, nickname I Test Elisa, because yes, she cares about stats, but she's also trusting her eyes and she's watching the game. She's picking up on nuances. Elisa, what's up? Hello. Hello, everyone. What's up? Uh, not much, a lot. We, we, we watched the game at your place. Uh, it was, uh, it was pretty damn dramatic. Is that, is that the most dramatic basketball game you've ever watched? By far. That was by far the most dramatic, intense basketball watching experience I've had. Um, I think actually close second will be the... Kawhi four bounce shot. I think we we're quick to forget how dramatic that game was, but that yes. was like, you know, <laughs> what a month ago now. I know so it's easy to forget, but yeah, it was very dramatic. Oh, and this game, um, you know, it had tragedy too. Like it was like, it was truly theatrical. This exactly. Game. It was, you know, because of the, the narrative around, even before the game started, you know, once the Raptors won game four, I found that the the narrative around game five was all about Kevin Durant. It was like, yes, he's going to return. Oh, he, he warmed up with the team. People saw him practicing. He's questionable. Oh, he's going to go. There's no, there's no minutes restriction, blah, blah, blah. And then obviously him on that court for whatever 10 minutes he played and complete fire he was amazing and then obviously the injury was very dramatic the fans the players having to coach the fans I I just felt like it was a very dramatic game in a lot of different respects and then the for the Raptors to come back in the fourth and have a chance to win it with a Kyle Lowry say like there's nothing more dramatic for this Raptors team than that. I know. Uh, and then the miss is dramatic. It's also dramatic. So yeah, it was by far the most dramatic game I've ever watched. Is there anything uh, like any piece of drama in the game that you feel like on any other day would have gotten more press? But because of everything that happened, you know, it's not getting like, is there, is there any like nuggets about the game where you're like, this is pretty dramatic? Um, maybe not so much like not drama drama, but mm-hmm. before KD went down, there was that Fred Van Vliet, KD. Oh yeah. Face. Yeah. Uh, you know, you fouled me. That's a foul. That's a foul, which ended up in like smiles and like, yo, it's all good. But again, because everybody was so like, feverishly anticipating Kevin Durant and Fred Van Vliet is so small against him and he's already got like his face knocked yeah, out. And it was like, intense. That was a pretty cool moment. Had Durant been able to play the whole game and had Van Vliet maybe been able to contribute more, if that had ended up in a rough win, I think that moment would have been looked at as like, a, this is our little guy standing yes. up to the big dog. Totally. That sort of thing, right? Yeah. yeah. I think... Uh, I wanted to imagine Fred or like, I I just want to imagine him in general, like only being able to say, uh, my name is Fred. I just had a baby and I named him Fred. (laughs) <laughs> like I want, I wanted like I like if when KD was in his face, I wanted him to be saying that. Like yeah. <laughs> my name is Fred. I just had a baby. I named him Fred. Like yeah, I'm Fred, but I'm Fred Senior. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, you know, I don't think it's a it's a major secret that uh, that you know you get pretty like worked up during games and and it's it's pretty intense. Um, yeah. Well, how was that game for you? <laughs> Uh, like having a party and, 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 uh, and like when, when everyone yeah. left, were you like, I need to go for a long walk or were you like, whatever, let's, let's Yeah, go, let's it was bad. Up. I'm not going to lie. It wasn't, I, it was one of those things where I was very torn about doing it in the first place because I get like that. I get very anxious. I get very stressed. I don't like to... I don't like to watch the Raptors lose with a lot of people. Yes. Um, but I very much like watching the Raptors win with a lot of people. And, it, and you know, 
Miguel, like my husband, everybody wanted to be a part of this. And we're, we're so close with the Raptors that I felt sort of like, you know, this is such a special moment anyway, even if they lose, I do want to be with everyone. But mm-hmm. you know what? It didn't turn out like that because I know. the loss, everybody felt so bad after the loss, not just because, oh, Raptors lost, we didn't win the championship. But again, like the Kevin Durant thing, the injury, like both teams were feeling sad, I think. And like... It was it was really stressful to be in that kind of situation at the time. I have no regrets. I love you all, obviously. <laughs> yeah. um, and, you know, I, this is like a personal kind of thing I have to work on with myself. Um, Lisa, you're Freddie, doing just you, like, fine. Okay? Uh, a couple of weeks ago when we went to your wedding, there, we had a group watch situation at a bar, the mm-hmm. double OT game against right. Milwaukee, and yes. that was also not a good time for Elisa. That was like, uh, get me out of this place right now, and I had uh, my husband be like, suck it up and be with everybody, and that ended up being the right move, but see, I don't know. It's a personal journey I'm going on. Yeah, don't, hey, I'm, I'm there with you, because like, we watch a lot of games together, and I think we know each other's yeah. like rules, right? Um, yeah, exactly. And we can watch it like a a small viewing party of like four people or like 30 people and I think me and you both kind of like even at the beginning of the second half uh, yesterday I could tell people were still talking and then I looked yeah. around and you were the other person like me who had just like basically stopped listening to whoever was talking to them and zeroed in on the game um, yeah, 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 no, it's, exactly. it's, it's good to kind of like be a community in a loss. Um, even though that's obviously like much, much harder and easier said than done, but yeah. So as far as like the, the, the way the team took that loss, is there any negative residuals? Did we lose any mojo? Is it kind of like, doesn't really matter because the, it, it's going to be defined as like the KD game, which is its own thing. Yeah, that's a good question. And I've had a couple of days to reflect on my feelings. I think, I think it's going to be okay. I think the Raptors are going to regroup. And the only reason I say that is because they have done it all season and all playoffs. Like this kind of stoicness from Kawhi and his ability to stay level headed, never get too high, never get too low. It's been copied now by other people on the team, including Lowry and Van Vliet. They're very vocal about being like that now. You know, there's all like press coverage about after yeah. Raptors wins and they're just like, they're not smiling because they're like, no, we need to win four. Like, I actually do think that that mentality will carry over. I think that they flew to Oakland. They're getting their practice in. They're getting their treatments. They're watching video. I think they're, you know, in the gym. I think that they are actually preparing like they should. And I don't think they're shook by, you know, they're not on Twitter all the time or like reading every article like we are. Right. So I think that they're trying to stay focused and I, and I believe them that they, that they're going to be focused. Um, who out of the like, Raptors you know, is what? who, who out of the Raptors like fits this identity the least. Like I, I used to think about this when LeBron had those teams mm-hmm. where they did the whole, like they did the whole like celebratory dance stuff. And I'd wonder mm-hmm. like, I wonder which one of these guys is like, this sucks. You know what I mean? Like, is there a mm-hmm. Raptor who's like, Kawhi, I appreciate who you are, but all I ever want to do is like go buck wild. Like, is mm-hmm. it is it Pascal? Maybe is it Norm in the club? Yeah. Is it Mafuzi yeah, Chef? I was thinking. I, it's a very good question. I think maybe if anybody, I don't know that there is anybody like that on the team because everybody looks to Kawhi as the leader and they feel like, oh, we're we're gonna follow him whatever he does. If anybody, maybe Pascal, only because. He's spicy P, you know, he's got personality coming out of him at all sides and he kind of does wear his emotions on his face Um, and he's young. So like it can be, it can be like challenging to go through this big moment, this big stage is the first time he's been in the final. So maybe, yeah, he's letting some emotions get to him. But Mm -hmm. again, like I'm stretching saying that about Pascal. I don't actually think that he is distracted. I think that he is ready to work hard and I think he is taking the lead from Kawhi and from other people. So, I mean, I didn't know how much of a, of a grunge fan you were uh, back, back in the day, but uh, well, what's a oh, nice, like where this is going. Yeah, what's, what's a nice grungy song perhaps nurse could play for the guys on, on his acoustic guitar to kind of get them to, you know, maybe get in the zone mm. and chill out a bit. 
What's a grungy song that Nurse could play on his guitar to get them in the zone? God, you know, I mean, Smells Like Teen Spirit has the opening riff. So, sure, sure. I, like, you don't even have to sing the whole song. It should get guys, like, bopping their heads. Yeah, maybe. okay. But you need something with a little more, like, depth. You need, like, a... I don't know. Do you think Nurse like plays Old, like old Town Road, maybe? Which one? Yeah. <laughs> you know Old Town Road by Little Nas X? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just to I maybe give him a laugh, like right? 90s grunge, like... Yeah. I, I, you what, know, what, if, what if they play, like, um, I went too like a specific little sound garden, like a Black Hole Sun? <laughs> yes. <as> like, <laughs> yeah, Black Hole like Sun, a, for sure. As, like, a counter to, like, sunny California, you know? It's like, I know we're going to come in and, like, spoil their party because we're fucking the best. I don't know. <laughs> Lisa, I don't know. Oh, this is a long sound cue, Matt. Um, I don't know if you heard that. It sounds like a bunch of doors closing. I can kind of hear something in the background. <laughs> it's a, it's a bowling strike. Oh, it's a bowling strike. Okay, well. Oh, it's a bowling strike. <laughs> Lisa, you come on my pod, you're going to get confused. <laughs> that's, that's what we do, okay? Um, I love it. But but yeah, that, that's it. Um, we just wanted to talk to you for a little bit, and uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna give Jason a call, and um, uh, yeah, I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you when we're watching the game together. Yeah, amazing. Well, everybody have a very peaceful, calm night tonight, and go raps. Go raps. All right, this one's called Kawhi the Thief for all of his steals. So. Kawhi started the playoffs with 147 steals uh, and 52nd all time. He now has 185 steals. So since last pod, Kawhi has passed Charles Oakley, Kevin Garnett, Stephen Curry, and Russell Westbrook. Huge. He now sits at 33rd all time in playoff steals, and he's coming for Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Can you dig it, Maddie? <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Jason, Jason Duras. Okay. Um, awesome. Uh, I'm here with the, the final guest. It's uh, his second time doing the pod. He's one of the funniest people I know. Uh, oh, he's wow. also, yeah, you are, man. You're hilarious. Uh, <laughs> he's, break. he's also in, in LA somewhere. I don't know what, what I don't know what neighborhood. Let's, <laughs> he's in Silver Lake. No, uh, I, I, I don't know where he is, but we don't uh, have to pin him down. Yeah. That's where he's where he goes. <laughs> he's not in Toronto. So yeah, let me just ask you like, so you know what? I haven't even introduced. This is Jason DeRoss. What's yeah. up, buddy? Woo! Uh, congratulations to you because I think it's the first time I spoke to you since you're married. I got married. Yes, thank you. It was uh, it was well, amazing. Congrats! Yeah, uh, I bet. I got married. Then I had a birthday. Then the Raptors were like, "We're going to the finals because of that." Yeah, um, <laughs> and that felt pretty sick. Uh, but I actually wanted to ask, um, what's it feel like? Like, what does it feel like to be? in Los Angeles while all this is happening. Like you didn't move that long ago. No, I moved. It's crazy. Cause I'm only a year in and, uh, I grew up a Raptors fans. Like I was there for 95 for sure. And mm -hmm. I grew up on the NBA. Like I was going to games in Hamilton when they used to have exhibition games here. Wow. And, uh, it was, I, I flew to LA once before and this is how old I am too. Uh, it was to see magic Johnson play. And that's why, why I came down here. <laughs> Uh, wow. And now you now sir I'm, are old. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's very true. No. Uh, but now it's like I move away and it's two. it's kind of twofold. One, it sucks because I know the party's going to be the best when we do win tomorrow night. Yes. Uh, but two, it's also like uh, you can appreciate a lot down here because it's forming a community down here as well. So you get like that, that little group of people that feels so close and so tight, you know, like when, when, the, when like Canada's in the Olympics or something. So it feels like we're still cheering for our country so much. Wait, so is it's, it, too, it's kind of twofold. Is there a Raptors bar? No, there is. 
It's really? Not, it's not normally a Raptors bar, but and it's not far from me, which is crazy because in Los Angeles, everything is far. Right. Uh, but it's literally a walk away. Um, there's a lot of Facebook groups that are like Canadians in LA or whatever. And they, they go down the street to a bar called the Phoenix, a bunch of them. And I think there was 250 people there last time. Oh, Whoa. that's amazing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so what? Yeah. Hey, like we're, we're the world's team. It's happening. We, we are. are the world because we're the ones that's outside. So so people are yeah. loving it down here. So uh, I, I, I had Gary on uh, earlier in the pod and I was asking him about like just, like, you know, people reacting in the bar. And I, I think for a mm. lot of folks, it was like there was like confusion and excitement. But obviously there was some people who were like, I guess, happy that someone was hurt. What was the reaction right. like in the bar you were at? Like, was, was, was it varied? Was there a couple of people who were like, I don't care. I'm glad he's hurt. Or was that like none of that? Like, yeah, what, like I'm in a not judgmental, not judgmental way. I'm just, it's a bit of human psychology. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out. Just be honest. Tell me you booed Katie. Uh, yeah. No, we had, a, we had a tiny contingent over here for that game at my place. So it was a bunch of like tight Canadians and we all re- reacted the same way of like, Oh my God, he's down. And, I think we couldn't tell that people were cheering. We kind of assumed it was like a hockey slash football thing. Like, I don't think we picked up on it right away, except for the one person waving by like some idiot in the fan that they caught. Uh, so we were all like, oh, what are they yelling at us for? And then I got a text from a guy down here that's an L.A. native. And he was like, I hate you guys. You guys are the worst. Like immediately. Yeah, that, uh, they really ran with that narrative very fast, don't you think? It was, but this was like his own, like, in, uh, it, he just ingested it. And he was like, I hate Toronto fans now. Like, it was it was like night and day because uh, he's the one guy down here that I talk basketball to all the time. Right. Uh, and and to that moment, he was like, oh, man, you guys are so lucky. The fan, like, Jurassic Park is insane. Like, so this is from an outside view. They were like, "That your city's the best for fans. And then in a moment, he was like, karma's coming, bitch. <laughs> like, that's kind of what he said. I like this guy. He's like the wolf of, like, your friends. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, He's like, he's like the Harvey Keitel. Like he's going to come in and clean you up. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty great. But um, yeah, sorry. That's pretty great that your friends like really like, think you know, he's turned on you. <laughs> well, long yeah, we're term. not friends anymore. <laughs> now we're done. That's over with. Um, <laughs> Yeah, like, like but the, my viewing party was just like devastation. Like, I yeah, everyone was so upset right away. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not a person that's on the bandwagon of like, uh, like when Katie went to Golden State, I wasn't as upset as the majority of people were because I just, I love that guy. That guy talks basketball like, uh, he he loves the game and I love watching him play. So when he went down, I'm like, this could be the end of a. Uh, a career. This could be the end, which is terrible. I, I, I asked Ned this earlier, but I'm, I'll, I'll ask you the same question because I feel like it kind of like, you know, it, it, it puts a feeling to like the gravity of the situation. Do you think uh, KD ever makes an all NBA team again in his career? So he's uh, 31 now and he's about to, or you just got the surgery. And I think like, the best yeah, he version of that, like a minute. I'd be like, well, what's the best version of that? He plays in the playoffs next year, maybe. Uh, I, I think he, I I think he might. They're, they're saying maybe he's out for the entire season because that's where all yeah. these talks are. So like, and that's 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 hard. Uh, so he probably doesn't touch a court until he's thirty two. And I think he'll do it. Uh, if I had to, if I had to go into my head, I'm sure a lot of people are like, no way. But like, uh, I think so. I mean, DeMarcus Cousins had a similar injury at a bit older and uh, he had a few shining moments. This right. like a couple moments of like popping back out. Uh, so I'm hoping uh, with Durant, it's going to be like, he. I'm, I mean, I guess it's just a young boy who came down to see Magic Johnson just hoping and wishing <laughs> that it happens. You're like, and I, and I still <laughs> am waiting for Magic Johnson to meet me and my mom for lunch. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know why that, that would be your main goal as a kid, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, so so how, how are you feeling about like the the Raptors going forward? Like, have they lost any momentum? Do you think that like like is there is there a particular player who needs to step it up? Or it yeah. honestly felt like um, when when that happened, and I guess everybody saw this. It felt like the energy was sucked off the court for the Raptors for a while, and it took like a second to bounce back. Yeah, um, and I feel like even that that droned on throughout the game. So hopefully, the entire team comes back. Um, I mean, there's obviously people that have to step up, uh, guys like even Kyle Lowry 
I mean, it's kind of obvious he's off, he's still hot and cold. And I think that's like, that's I the nature so, yeah. of his game. Yeah. It's the reason why I think people are like, oh, he's just bad in the playoffs is like consistency is a uh, key when you're in the best of a game, seven game series. And he's so much of a roller coaster, even in the regular season. It's like, of course, but when he has his down games, now they mean so much more. Mm-hmm. And it's like, so you just have to have consistency, I think. And so, so it'd be great for Lowry to step back up. And I think with, he's still, he's, he's killing it in a lot of these playoffs, obviously, but like, you know, those down games are really important. So, yeah, my, my big thing is like, uh, and I was talk to, uh, to, to my brother Thomas about this, but like, I just feel like the narrative of, um, like gotta make more shots is so it's kind of just like reductive for basketball because, you know, the best shooters are going to hit at like a 40% rate. Um, yep. and all shots are not created equal. You know what I mean? Like the, the Kawhi step up three in a, in like Draymond's face, is obviously harder, but he's the only person who can do it. And and a guy like Green needs spot up threes, and and Gasol needs kind of like end of the shot clock threes, and Siakam needs like a three when he's kind of like wide open, and the defense is like sagging off. But I do think there is something to be said about like enough people need to kind of do their thing at the same time, um, and and how and we- how Nurse kind of gets that going, I think, is like the magic. Yeah, the magic button that needs to be pressed. It's true. And it's like, we're still, the one thing that's overlooked and I don't feel like a lot of people are saying is our, our defense is insane. Like, yes, uh, we're, we're keeping Golden State to scores that they are never at. And uh, so like, yeah, of course, more baskets go in better for us when they go in, uh, keeping your defense up. So to like, the more you score, the better, obviously. So you're hundred percent right though. Like in Philly, Milwaukee, you know, or even Orlando, like our defense is what's been special about this team. It's not been our shot making at all. Yeah, and um, I guess this is kind of a hiccup, but like, because when you said which player uh, needs to step it up, I will say this. I was about to put money in Vegas uh, on Siakam to win series MVP, and he's not anywhere close to that. Uh, but when he, it, when He's not, started, but he's been all right. He's been amazing, but he was 3,000 to one. And I was like, oh my God, if I just throw some money down on this and this guy pulls it off, I'm buying a house. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, baby. Yeah, I'm wondering <laughs> what, what kind of bets do you think? Like, I, hope, I hope someone gets rich off the Raptors. I thought about yeah. putting like $200 down, but then I also didn't really know how to do that or what that even means. <laughs> that's you know what I mean? What, that's, that's only what kept me from actually doing it. <laughs> like I needed someone to be like, oh, will you? Okay, then give me that $200. I'll call my bookie. I'll, I'll, I'll go take care of this for you. <laughs> <laughs> and then send me an email being like, you have officially put 200 down. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. But uh, I'm so worried understand. that betting knows like karaoke. So like, you're like, I don't know. I don't know how to do it. I don't know what I'm doing. But then you do it once and you're like, oh, that was kind of fun. Yeah. 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 Hundred times yeah. Over. yeah. I guess I'm literally the star of this basement. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, okay. Let's, uh, let's kind of leave on this. Um, most people are predicting the Raptors in six. And I think everyone's feeling pretty confident about that. Um, what is your like semi planned celebration in LA? And the only reason, the reason I say semi planned is because that's what's happening here, right? You got to kind of be ready for whatever's going to happen to happen, but also you got to be like chill. You know what I mean? Well, I know this is the end of my 10 minutes, but also I'll make this quick, but like, it's kind of, again, a twofold answer. One, you're right. Cause I was in Toronto when the blue Jays won it in like 92 and 93. And, and you were 45, I right? Still see, I, I, I'm, I'm more than that. I'm like 72 now, uh, but like, the party is still, it's hard to explain to people how happy that city was and like how long the party went on and what's about to happen. Cause you can see it already bubbling. And I'm like, Oh, I can't believe I'm going to miss that. So like anything's going to happen for you guys down here. I know because I also have a three-year-old son. Uh, so we have to be a bit more planning and that's why we haven't went to that bar that often. It's like, we've got to get people here. So, um, it's hard because there's Canadians spread out all over. And I'm like, I just want to get everybody in my house, but I have like two seats in my house and it's a small little one bedroom apartment. So what I will be doing, whatever it is, I will be in my house 
with a whole, hopefully a bunch of Canadians singing the anthem uh, and having a great time, like being so proud to be Canadian. Well, God damn it. If it happens, take some pics, okay? <laughs> yeah, we're going to be making Caesar. We went and got special stuff. We've got all dressed trips down here now. We've got Caesars. <laughs> we're making old fashions with maple syrup. Like, it's, it's <laughs> amazing. Leslie Styler brought a Canadian flag. Oh, wow. Um, okay, I don't know if you can hear that very, very fancy music that Matt just played, but... Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if Jason can even hear it. This, you know, I think he can. It seems like music that John Malkovich would dance around to. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say that. That's pretty perfect. Um, oh my but, uh, god! But dude, uh, I miss you. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully, I see you soon. And um, yeah, thanks for hopping on the pod. Oh, thanks for having me. Let's do this, guys. Thursday night, it's happening. Let's, let's do it, baby. Um, cool. Uh, enjoy, enjoy the game with your uh, your wife and your baby, and hopefully, every yeah. Canadian in the city. And to everybody, yeah. since this is our last caller, enjoy the game. Enjoy the game. And if you're listening and you're in LA and you're from Canada, just come to my house. Yes. Welcome. And the true fans. You're welcome. <laughs> When we, we celebrate the win, and when that WestJet flight comes in with the team, be there, <laughs> be proud. Okay, you you heard it here from Matt. A plug for WestJet. <laughs> um, okay, uh, thanks, Jason. Appreciate it, man. All right, I'll see you guys. All right, see you, buddy. All right. Can anyone around here speak basketball? It's the Confederacy of Dunks Basketball Podcast. 